The specialist in technology security says almost 50 companies were hit by a coordinated cyber attack this summer. 29 chemical companies were among those targeted, and that has the security experts worried. Richard Falkenrath, our own security expert, is here with us this morning. Morning, pardon me, Richard. Uh, Richard, of course, is a Bloomberg contributing editor and a principal at the Chertoff Group. Richard, why should we care about this series of cyber attacks any more than we have about the others that we've talked about for months? Sony, Google, NASDAQ, the banks, they've all been hit. What difference does it make if a bunch of chemical companies are being targeted? Well, it matters a lot to the chemical companies since they've been the subject of a concerted attack. It also matters because the chemical industry has really unique environmental and safety issues associated with it. So the people who have chemical plants or chemical manufacturing facilities in their communities are always especially concerned about the safety of those facilities. So anything that sounds like a security breach at a chemical plant gets a little bit extra attention uh, among national security folks and, in fact, the companies themselves. Could this kind of information that they're hacking create real world damage? I mean, this is chemical. It's, it's theoretically possible, and it's one of the big worries of uh, the national security community that someday a hacker will find a way to attack a company in a virtual way, but cause real world physical effects. In this case, however, it looks like it was industrial espionage. Like they were contracted, a, a, a cyber hacking syndicate in China was contracted by somebody, we don't know who, to go into the chemical industry and extract. Uh, intellectual property, the molecules that are important for advanced materials, and industrial processing techniques that could be replicated somewhere else in the world. But the hacking was taking place in China? Well, it, it, the, it, it traces back to China. So it's very complicated the way that it's set up. This was what we call spear phishing. So it was each company got an email from someone that looked innocuous. It was either a security upgrade or an invitation to a meeting. And when they opened the attachment, it executed some code inside the system. That code spread throughout their network. It communicated with a command and control server. That command and control server was controlled from China. Therefore, we deduce it's orchestrated from When China. you say industrial espionage, Richard, do we have any idea what the motive or intent was here? Well, uh, as best we can tell, somebody wanted the secrets of the advanced chemical industry, presumably to replicate in their own chemical industry. It's, it's, as, simp it's as simple as that. No, no, that, that, we, that's a that deduction. Some... We're not certain of it, but that's what we deduce from this pattern. Is that somebody the hacker, or are these hackers for hire? We think this is hackers for hire. That this same group has used similar techniques and similar servers with the defense industry and, in fact, against human rights groups. And so that they are part of a hacking industry that can be contracted with to steal other people's secrets. Well, more than just steal other people's secrets, I mean, does it then become a genuine national security threat if you can tap into the network of a sophisticated industrial chemicals company in order to steal its secrets, surely you can tap into that network to do other things, more nefarious things perhaps. Yeah, that is the biggest worry in the cybersecurity community, that someone will figure out how to do that, target our critical infrastructure, and hurt us in a real world way with a cyber attack. I am worried about the safety of Eric Schatzker's Facebook page. That is my concern. If only Eric Schatzker had a Facebook page. Ah. ah, there we go. All right, Richard, it is great to see you as always. Richard Falkenrath, he is our security expert here on the Inside Track. He's a contributing editor at Bloomberg and a principal at the Chertoff Group. We're coming back in a couple of minutes, folks.